today we're going to be talking about the best mid rangers that have come out this year that you can pick up for around the $300 price point. I'll have all those links uh, down below. So let's get started with the Poco X3 Pro. Um, so I really enjoyed this phone. I think it has a pretty good trade-offs. And so let's get started with the design. It does have a just a plastic design. I think it has a, a really unique design. Um, the camera module still hasn't really grown on me, but I do think the phone has its own like little unique look. It's IP53 dust and splash uh, protection on here. You also have a pretty big 6.67 inch IPS display. It's 120 hertz, so it's extremely smooth, and it's also a 1080p panel, 395 for the PPI. Uh, overall, I really enjoyed the panel on here, even though, yes, it's not a super AMOLED panel, but it's a, a nice quality IPS panel. You have a punch hole, and like I said, the 120 hertz is buttery smooth, so just uh, navigating on this phone is awesome with Android 11, and you have MIUI 12.5 on here, and I think one of the best things about this phone is the Snapdragon 860. It's a a really nice chip especially for gaming so this does make it one of the best gaming uh, phones i have a full gaming test and it can play pretty much any game in the play store at high settings fortnite call of duty whatever you throw at it uh, it will be able to play it now you also have micro sd support 128 gigs of internal storage six or eight gigs of ram depending on your configuration and you also have some really nice sounding stereo speakers as well as a headphone jack on this phone too uh, this phone also has NFC uh, as well, so you really do have all of your bells and whistles on here. You have a physical fingerprint scanner on the side, which acts as the uh, power button as well. That works very fast too. And I think the cameras are pretty solid on here. Again, at the price point, I don't have any complaints. You can see from the photos right now, 48 megapixel standard, 8 megapixel ultra wide, 2 megapixel macro and depth sensor, 4K video, and then a 20 megapixel selfie cam that shoots in 1080p. I think the cameras are good. Yes, could they are they the best on this list? No, but I think they are good for any casual shooter that's just trying to get a good shot. I think you'll be uh, totally fine with these cameras. Uh, so one of the highlights with this phone is definitely the 5160 milliamp battery you get 33 watt charging as well absolutely battery b so this phone lasts literally all day even if you're like more on the gaming side uh on your smartphone then definitely this is still an all-day phone if you're just somebody that is uh social media and stuff like that easily you could do two days so next is the iphone se 2020 i think this phone still has a lot going for it so uh you do have a premium designer here it's glass and metal even though it uses the old iphone 8 sort of body uh, on here it is ip67 dust and water resistant which is really nice uh, is the front kind of look a little bit older uh yes but uh, overall i think the design is is fine i think most apple fans don't really care uh you do have a 4.7 inch ips display on here and the thing about the display is it still looks pretty good even though it's a 720p plus display 326 for the ppi because the display is so small it's still a very sharp looking display so i really had no issues it gets fairly bright so zero issues with the display besides there being you know a lot of bezel up front uh, so you do have on here the latest version of ios uh, this phone will be getting updates for years and years to come so that is definitely a bonus with this phone it has the apple a13 chip extremely fast this phone flies through pretty much anything it's always smooth and fast so that is one thing gaming on here is really great you can play games pretty much maxed out uh, high settings on here so as far as performance goes this phone is a beast it might be the fastest phone uh, on this list actually uh, so no sd card support 64 gigs of internal storage and 3 gigs of ram you also have stereo speakers on this phone which sound pretty decent no headphone jack of course nfc is on board with your apple pay you also have the touch id up front which is actually a pleasant to use these days uh, with the mask and stuff like that so having the touch id definitely uh, came in clutch this year uh, so you do have on here a very good camera so one of the cons with this phone is that it's only one camera there's no ultra wide macro depth there's nothing it's just one single lens but that lens does take very good photos a 12 megapixel standard shoots in 4k 24 frames per second and then a 7 megapixel selfie cam that shoots in 1080p 
Overall, like I said, I was really happy with uh, image quality on here. Colors uh, came out very good. You get a good amount of detail as well. Video is actually very good on this phone too. So overall, I was really happy with photo quality uh, on this phone. Like I said, the only con is that really there's just no ultra wide uh, on here. Other than that, I think it's perfectly, I think you'll be extremely happy with using this for FaceTime or whatever you want to use it for. Uh, so you do have on here uh, and this is a, sort of another con, a 1,821 milliamp battery with 18 watt charging. So battery life is not that great. One of the bonuses with this phone is that it does have wireless charging, uh, but battery life you usually get around four if you're like really light, maybe five hours of screen on time. Uh, but battery life is not, you know, super impressive on this phone. So, uh, you know, the pros is that it's compact, extremely powerful and great camera. So I would consider those uh, three to make up my mind if those are important. Next is the Redmi Note 10 Pro. In my opinion, this is one of the best looking phones that came out this year. And uh, the hardware is actually pretty solid on here. So it has a plastic frame, but it actually has a glass back. It's matte and it has a soft like texture to it. It's a really nice feeling phone. I absolutely love the way it looks. So I just love that about uh, this phone. It's IP53 dust and splash proof as well. It has the probably the best display on here a 6.67 inch 120 hertz AMOLED display at 1080p 395 for the PPI. So if you want just the best display, if you just care about that, that's top priority. Uh, this has the best display uh, currently and if you get it with the if you get the a52 5g which we'll talk about but that's going to cost a little bit more so this is cheaper and you still get a really good display uh, so you do have android 11 uh, with miui 12 the snapdragon 732g and adreno 618 um, so basically uh, this phone is not going to be as powerful as the x3 pro but uh, you will be able to casually game on here call of duty PUBG. those games all work fine but you're not going to be able to like uh, do high in max settings and stuff like that uh, so you do have micro sd support 128 gigs of internal storage and 6 gigs of RAM uh, you also have some really nice sounding stereo speakers on here as well and this phone does retain the headphone jack now you also have an infrared port along with NFC as well and this uses the fingerprint scanner slash power button mechanism on the side which works flawlessly uh, absolutely love it uh, so the cameras are definitely a highlight with this phone there are two variants uh, there's a 64 megapixel and then a 108 megapixel version uh, so I would recommend the 108 megapixel if you have like a little bit more cash uh, but you have that and then 8 megapixel ultra wide 5 megapixel macro and a 2 megapixel depth sensor it shoots in 4k 16 megapixel selfie shoots in 1080p absolutely fantastic photos a ton of detail i think that's definitely the highlight with the cameras there's a ton of detail with this phone and uh, you just get great images overall i'm super impressed with the cameras on here the ultra wide is great macro takes some really great close-up shots uh, i think you'll be very happy if you uh, get the 108 megapixel version uh, of this phone uh, so another highlight with this phone is this one has a massive battery as well a 5020 milliamp battery easily will get you through uh, four days use 33 watt charging is pretty fast as well so overall i'm loving the uh, note 10 pro this year i think it was a big step up uh, from the 9. Alright guys, next is the Google Pixel 5a 5G. This is a phone that I really, really enjoyed and I honestly think it still has one of the best cameras in a mid-range uh, smartphone right now. So it's got an actual aluminum frame and aluminum back on here. So it's actually a, a very sturdy feeling phone with sort of like this sort of plastic feeling coating uh, on it. It is also IP67 dust and water resistant. You do have on here a 6.3 inch uh, OLED display. It is HDR at 1080p 415 for the PPI. Overall I had no issues with the display uh, minus the fact that yeah there's no 90 or 120 hertz on here but it is an overall very good display with a punch hole so uh, not too you know many complaints here but you do have the stock version of Android which is really awesome here so when you know Android 12, 13, 14 comes out you'll be one of the first ones to get the update. 
You also have the Snapdragon 765G on here and the Adreno 620 on here. So performance wise, it's a mid tier chip. So, uh, you know, with stock version of Android, it's very smooth and also gaming is pretty decent on this phone as well. So I did not really have any issues, honestly. Uh, you do not have any SD card support. There is 128 gigs of storage and then you have six gigs of RAM on this phone. You also have the stereo speakers on here, which sound really, really good, very nice and full sounding speakers along with a headphone jack and this phone also has NFC on board as well as a physical fingerprint scanner on the back which works great uh, as well so obviously the main thing with this phone is the camera so you do have a 12.2 uh, megapixel lens on here with a 16 megapixel ultra wide it shoots in 4k 30 or 60 fps and then you have an 8 megapixel selfie cam that shoots in 1080p I still think this takes again some of the best photos, uh, you know, in this mid-range price range. So I honestly think it takes up there with, you know, flagship uh, quality uh, images. It just really is that impressive to me. Uh, so I was really happy with the color, just natural color, very good low light on this phone. I thought they improved the video as well on here too. Really great image stabilization. And uh, overall, I just think this is probably one of the best, um, you know, mid-rangers. Not, not, you know, one of the best spec out, but... Uh, definitely one of the best when it comes to just the image processing so what do you guys think um you know you do have one here a 4680 milliamp battery with 18 watt charging since they opted out of the 90 hertz or 120 hertz this phone actually does have very good battery life so i was really happy with that and of course it is missing the wireless charging which is not on you know a ton of mid ranges anyway so that's not a you know issue uh, so what do you guys think? Be sure to let me know and I'll catch you guys in the next one. The Samsung Galaxy A52 5G. Now, I own the 4G variant, but they're extremely hard to find. They're around 300 bucks. The A52 is around 400 bucks, the 5G one. Uh, but I definitely think it's worth it. I think it's the most balanced out of all the phones on this list. So you yeah, have just a plastic design, but it feels super premium as well. Absolutely love the design on the A52. It just feels extremely solid. Uh, it's IP67 dust and water resistant. You have a super AMOLED 120 hertz display at 6.5 inches, 1080p. 407 for the PPI, so it's pretty much tied with the Note 10 Pro as far as display quality. Uh, but like I said, it's going to cost you like 100, 100 bucks more. Uh, so you do have Android 11 with the Samsung One UI experience on here, Snapdragon 750G, and Adreno 619. Overall, you were able to game casually on here, no problem. The phone, uh, my phone was smoother with a weaker processor, so uh, overall, this phone should also be relatively smooth as well. You also have micro SD support, 128 gigs of internal storage, and 6 gigs of RAM on here. Um, so this phone has the stereo speakers on board, NFC is on board, your NFC, uh, not NFC, but your headphone jack is on board as well. So it has all the little bells and whistles that you will want. Oh, you also have your fingerprint scanner under the display, which I think works out really well because it's very fast. But the highlight with the A52 is really the cameras. It's taking some amazing photos. Uh, so you have a 64 megapixel standard and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. 5 megapixel macro and depth sensor. I honestly would put this up there. Like all of the mid range phones, cameras I've gotten so good that they all kind of take photos on par with each other. Um, but I, I was just super impressed with how Samsung does their colors. And I know they sort of oversaturate, make everything kind of look larger than life. But um, it really does come out looking fantastic. So absolutely love the image quality. 32 megapixel selfie, 4K video for that. It takes great photos overall just absolutely love it so you can see from the shots here and um you have a 4500 milliamp battery so it's got one of the smaller batteries on this list as as we said uh, most of these phones have like 5000 milliamp batteries except for the pixel and iphone but uh, this phone does pretty well with battery life 25 watt charging uh, which isn't too bad as well so definitely this is an awesome phone if you can pick up the standard 4g one the only negative with that is that it's a 90 hertz display and you also get the Snapdragon uh, 720G uh, processor, uh, which isn't as strong. So that's something to consider. Uh, but like I said, what do you guys think? Be sure to let me know and I'll catch you guys in the next one.